Howdy friendos, I'm Crazy Jason and welcome to my Wacky Emporium. And to yet another weekly roundup where I discuss uh, movies on DVD and Blu-ray and in today, in today's case, also an HD DVD um, that I have recently acquired. Um, you know, I don't, I don't talk about movies uh, that I've seen on Netflix or that I checked out from the library. This is basically just stuff that I've recently acquired. I've got stacks building up over there. I'm trying to go through them. I um, only have four movies to talk about this week um, because I've been to the theater. Went to see Super 8 yesterday. Um, if you want to hear some of my thoughts about that, uh, check out yesterday's uh, Viary that I uploaded. But, um, yeah, let's get right into it. Let's start off with the HD DVD of which I spake. That would be American Gangster starring Russell Crowe and Denzel Washington. What is it with the fucking names today? I don't know. Sadly, this is the only HD DVD that I have acquired that actually has a slipcover. That's pretty sad. That's a nice one too, I like it. This is the uh, HD DVD DVD combo format, and it's really cool the way they did this. They, they, they were basically flipper disc, and one side obviously was the HD, and the other side was the DVD. Um, the only thing that sucks about this one is you can get the theatrical version in HD, but if you want to watch the unrated version that it touts on the back, that's actually on the DVD side. So, um, now I could be wrong about that, but that, that's, you know, that's what I gather from the back. But, um, you know, this is a pretty long movie as it is, and uh, I didn't really want to sit through an additional 18 minutes. But if, if any of you guys have seen it and you think the unrated version is superior to the theatrical version, let me know. Uh, this is basically a movie about two men. One played by Denzel Washington, who's a um, Harlem gangster who makes a quick rise and, and sort of um, he, he develops a crime organization that's based on the Sicilian system. You know, it's all about family. It's all about protecting himself. You know, and it's very, very organized, whereas before it was sort of just chaotic. You know, sort of every man for himself. Kind of like a, I don't know, like a feudal system. And then he became the king of Harlem, basically. But it's a quick rise and fall. The other man, uh, played by Russell Crowe, he plays a detective who, and they juxtapose these two men's lives. Um, Russell Crowe is one of those men who failed at everything in his life until he did this one big, huge thing, bringing down... Frank Lucas, Frank Lucas, played by uh, Denzel Washington. Um, you know, he failed in his marriage. Um, you know, he, he, he was, I don't know, just kind of sloppy person. And, and that juxtaposed against Denzel Washington was very cool, collected, um, you know, and uh, seemed to have it together. Um, but uh, I don't know. It's... If you go in expecting The Godfather or something epic like that, it's not, not really, it doesn't have that epic feel. I mean, it is, you know, a lot of production value. I mean, um, you know, they, they, they put a lot into recreating the late 60s, early 70s, Harlem, in and around, you know, New York City. Um, you know, it, you know, there's a lot going for it. But I wouldn't say it's on that scale. It's more like a classier version of Scarface, you know, because you got this... Frank Lucas was an extremely brutal person. I mean, it's, it's pretty shocking. One thing I, that I give, you know, huge props to the movie is the opening scene that Ridley Scott chose. Um, it just cuts to uh, Frank Lucas with his uh, mentor, um, I can't remember the guy's name, but he was the former head of the sort of Harlem crime organizations. Um, and uh, basically, Denzel Washington, or Frank Lucas, is, is um, he's just, uh, he, he's shooting somebody. He's killing them, you know, and it's just very cold-blooded. And that's it. That's just the scene. There's no, no dialogue or anything like that. So uh, this character is a real cold badass and yet um when he achieves this his his success he brings his entire family from north carolina 
up to New York to live with them in this big mansion. So he's got this, this idea about family, you know, and uh, he uses all of his brothers. He brings them all into the fold, all into the crime organization. Um, so he's a very interesting character. I, I would love to read a book about this guy, actually, about both of these guys. Um, the, the detective, um, what's his name? Uh, Richie Roberts, that's who uh, Russell Crowe plays. Um, very interesting character. Both of these men, very complex, conflicted characters. You know, Russell Crowe is so... He's kind of ostracized from his own police department because he uncovered a million dollars in unmarked bills and he didn't take it, you know, or he didn't take a piece of it. And uh, you come to find out that two-thirds of the police were corrupt at that time. He took down... He took down a lot of cops in the early 70s, uh, corrupt police officers in New York City. Um, so there's a lot of epic story here. Um, it's just uh, the style of the film. You know, you think of something like The Godfather, and it's the music and the long scenes and the, the style of it. Now, I do have to say, you know, I'm, I'm not bashing this movie. This is, this is a really good, and I'm going to actually hold on to this, and that's a testament. You know, I don't... Just hold on to any movie, you know. If if there's a movie I watch and I like it, you know, but I, I you know, pretty much know that I'm never going to watch it again. I'm I'm going to trade it or sell it. I'm not going to just hold on to it just to make my collection look bigger, you know. I I I just build my collection on movies that I truly enjoy, and I could actually see myself watching this movie again. It's very enjoyable. Great performances um, all around, and Ridley Scott, you know, I think this is really one of his best films of the last 15 years. Um, that's my opinion, Yeah, I'm sticking with it. Uh, as far as the HD quality, um, it's interesting because I'm talking about a HD DVD here, and I do notice a difference with mine. I think part of that is the Toshiba player itself. Uh, it's a fantastic player, but then again, it, it only outputs 1080i. There's not that much of a difference. Now, with this HD, you know, um, as with most HDs versus a Blu-ray, um, to my eye, it's much sharper, much crisper, you know. Whereas a Blu-ray, to my eye, uh, just seems to have a deeper, more filmic look to it. Um, like, for instance, the blacks were here, but there was just like a, a layer of mid-tone gray over the entire film, if that makes any sense. But uh, highly recommended. I'm out. I'm done. I'm done talking about it. Next up, we just keep getting better and better. Saw 6. That was a lame attempt at a joke. Saw 6. Um, anyway, yeah, it's a Saw movie. I mean, you know, I have this tradition. Whenever there's a sale, I, I pick up the Saw movie. That's how I saw one. T well, no, I saw one at the theater way back when it came out. And, uh, you know, I was, I liked it. It was a good movie. Um, I, I, in my mind, there's Saul, the first one, and then there's all the sequels. Now, the sequels I watched, two, three, four, and then I skipped five and six and watched the last chapter. Then I just watched six. So the only one I haven't seen is five. Now, I wish I had watched five before six, because there's a lot of story going on in six that has to do with leftover stuff from five. Basically, um, Jigsaw's wife, Jigsaw died, he died of cancer, and uh, he left a box behind and a will for his wife to execute this last, you know, um, sort of piece of vengeance for him. Um, those of you who know the Saw movies will know what I'm talking about. Basically, for those of you who don't know the Saw movies, in my opinion, again, all of the sequels, they, they're about on the same level. They're, they're, in other words, they're fun to watch. You know, they have, uh, they have a lot of good twists and turns. They're good, like, uh, puzzle piece movies, you know, good uh, mystery, you know, movies, except, you know, basically you have all of these people in all of these horrible contraptions that they have to try to get out of, or they're going to lose body parts, or they're going to be, you know, shot through the head, or they, it's gruesome. It is gruesome, and this one is... You know, I have to say, out of all the Saw films I've seen, I, I think I enjoy all of the mechanisms <laughs> in this one the, the, the most. Um, so, in that respect, 
As far as the uh, picture quality, um, none of the Saw films have ever looked good on Blu-ray to my eye. Uh, this one actually looks the best to my eye. Um, you know, and I realize they're low budget, but still, it's, uh, I don't know, what, what, what can you say? You know, I'm going to trade this, I'm going to sell it, whatever. It, it's a Saw movie, it's enjoyable, but, you know, I guess it just depends on if that's your thing, you know. Next up, now this is a very, very creepy horror film, Grace. This is a, uh, this is a weird one. This is strange. It's, uh, the thing that makes it sort of unsettling is all of the characters in this film, right off the bat, are just weird. You know, there, there's, there's not one character that seems in any way somewhat normal that you can sort of latch on to. Um... You know, I think this movie aspired uh, to Cronenberg in a lot of ways um, with the weirdness factor. Um, it didn't quite make it. It's worth a watch. It's worth a rental. That's for sure. I just put it into my replacement case here. Uh, I'm on the fence on whether or not to keep this. Um, just because I have a few friends I might like to show it to. Just, I don't know, because it's... I don't know, it's just one of those movies. Now, the PQ is horrible. It's horrible. It's the lowest marks that I'm an, I have given a Blu-ray thus far. And I'm giving a PQ on this a .5. That's right, 0 0.5. Because, I mean, the, the, the dark scenes are just mush. You can barely see, make out the characters. You can barely see what's going on. It's just wretched. Now... You know, the daylight scenes are okay, they're fine, and never mind, you know, some of the skin tones are off here and there. They're okay, but it does not make up for all of those night scenes. They're just downright inexcusable. And, you know, I don't know if that's the fault of the transfer or if, or what, but it, it's, it's really bad. And, um, the movie itself is basically about this, um, this woman who's pregnant, and, uh, I would say this couple, but but the, the husband doesn't play a role in the entire film, just sort of at the beginning. I don't want to give away a lot, but um, she's insistent on um, giving birth via a midwife, like a, a water birth, you know, in a tub or whirlpool or whatever, you know, they get in and get birth. She doesn't want doctors. She doesn't want a hospital. Her mother-in-law, on the other hand, is insistent on doctors and you know, um, all that, and of course the woman is a vegan, as opposed to the mother, who's all about eating meat, and it's an interest. it's a weird kind of, um, well, let me, let me get a little further in the story. Um, I'm gonna have to give, I'm a spoiler, spoiler alert here, okay, because, uh, the husband, they're, they're driving home, they get in a wreck, the husband dies, and she loses her baby, she doesn't, the, the, the fetus is still, inside but she's gonna she's gonna give birth you know stillborn and she's insistent on going through with the birth for whatever reason you know she's insistent on going through and giving birth to this dead baby i don't know why but um you know and her midwife who acts weird and kooky is i don't know for it's seemingly no reason um she uh she agrees to it it's just bizarre so uh you know they they have the birthing scene in the big tub and you know she gives birth to a dead baby and everybody leaves the room and then suddenly miraculously the baby comes to life okay and it turns out the baby is a vampire basically <laughs> the baby likes blood the baby feasts on blood you, you you slowly discover this over a series of scenes and then the mother is you know going out and getting big slabs of meat and making you know getting the the blood and putting it into bottles and you know then the baby is like you know makes her bleed out of her breast it's a lot of organic nastiness going on you know it's uh kind of like the movie bug sort of you know that that kind of very realistic organic sort of ill disgusting stuff um meanwhile her mother-in-law is trying to take the baby away you know and uh you know they're doing they're playing around with some ideas here they have the crazy mother who, who's a vegan and yet ironically her her baby feasts on blood so she's having to go to greater and greater lengths to uh, provide her baby with you know sustenance um 
I recommend it because it's just one of those movies that you kind of have to see. You know what I mean? I, in my opinion, even though it, the, 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 the picture quality is absolutely shoddy, I almost don't recommend it on that alone. The, the audio was fine, you know, I'd give it like a 3.5, it was fine, but uh, I don't know what to tell you folks. Don't, don't just blind buy it, that's for sure. Last movie I'm going to talk about, and uh, making a, uh, a big U-turn here, The Runaways. That's right, and um, Kristen Stewart plays Joan Jett, and Dakota Fanning plays Sheree Shiri Curry. And um, it's all about the formation of the Runaways and early days of Joan Jett. And also, a, a real standout role is Michael Shannon, who plays Kim Fowley. And uh, from everything I've read, he does a fantastic job. I thought he did a great job. I'm not really familiar with the early days of the Runaways and Kim Fowley, so I'm no expert. Uh, but to my eye, he, he did a fantastic job as a character, flat out. Um, you know, without him, you know, I, I don't know, Joan Jett had something inside of her. You could tell that, you know, she was going to be something. But, but really, it was Kim Fowley that put this girl group together, you know, and made them what they were. Um, as a uh, biopic, 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 yeah, um, it's interesting, it's good, you know, it's, it almost plays out like a, uh, just a fictional film, you know, um, but, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, let's, what do you want, PQ, um, I give it a 3.5 out of 5, nothing outstanding, but, um, it's, it's serviceable, yeah, audio quality 4, you know, when the songs kick in, sounds great. Um, I give the performances are, are really outstanding. I, I thought, um, you know, Kristen Stewart, um, she didn't have like the Twilight, you know, <sighs> stupid emo looks and things like that. Um, I thought she did a great job as Joan Jett. Some people may disagree, but whatever. Dakota Fanning, you know, she, she, she played a weird... If that's how this character really was, then she nailed it. That's all I'm going to say, but... Um, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, for me. I know a lot of people love this movie. Uh, for me, it was it was good. You know, I give the film a four. You know, out of five. It's 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 real. It's great. You know, it's a great film, but it's not excellent. You know, it's not top of the line. But um, you know, I will say this though. This is what I've heard. Um, if you're a fan of Joan Jett, if you're a fan of The Runaways you're probably going to like this movie. You know, that's bottom line. I'm, I'm not, you know, I didn't know really much about The Runaways. So for me, it, it was just kind of a good movie to watch. So anyway, that is it, folks. That's all I got for you. Um, we'll have some more next week. And uh, let's see, don't forget, uh, new field trip coming Monday on Kakalaki Movie Madness. Let's see what else. Oh, there's a Walmart exclusive Blu-ray steelbook of Battle Los Angeles or, or Battle LA. Um, so if, if you're a steelbook collector and you don't know about it, get thee to Walmart. It's uh, $24.99. Um, I actually saw ba Battle Los Angeles. I think I talked about it in the Viary. I'm not sure, though. Um, I'm not going to go into my ideas about that movie here. Suffice so it to say, I thought it was good better than what I had read. So, um, just letting you know if you're addicted to steelbooks. All right, well, that's going to do it for this week. I'm Crazy Jason, and you've been in my wacky emporium, baby.